Ixia, a leader in performance analysis solutions, presents the IX Network video tutorial series. IX Network is Ixia's flagship software application for testing the network infrastructure, including all devices like routers, switches, network access controllers, broadband access, carrier Ethernet, and data center Ethernet. It's used by professionals around the world, including development and system test engineers, network design and support engineers, and even marketing and sales to demonstrate product capabilities and performance. This video tutorial is brought to you by the IX Network product management team. In this IX Network video tutorial, we're covering the per session statistics feature. This feature allows the user to look at the statistics of the control plane and data plane traffic, not only at a high level aggregate view, but also drill down into each protocol session and each data plane session and look at the detailed stats. To do this video, we've broken it up into three short chapters. Chapter one is our test overview, which includes the objective of the test and the PPPoE protocol and topology that we'll be using in this test. In chapter two, we'll cover the configuration of the IX network application, including the PPPoE control plane sessions, as well as the data plane traffic using the advanced traffic wizard. In chapter three, we'll cover the results. We'll cover the high level aggregated statistics, and then again, drill down on the per session stats of the control and data plane sessions. This feature that we'll be showing today is not only available for PPPoE, which is our example, but also other protocols available within the authentication, access, and data center bridging of folders within the IX network application. Those protocols include PPPoX, L2TP, 802.1X, NAC, web authentication, and fiber channel over Ethernet. Let's take a look at the test objective, the test overview, and the test topology that will be used to demonstrate the IX network's per session statistics feature. The objective of this test is to verify that different types of PPP users do not impact each other during peak usage time. Uh, the test setup includes on port 1 on the left hand at the bottom of your screen here, there will be 10 uh, business and 10 residential PPPoE customers coming into the DUT, the PPPoE server, for a total of 20. 10 of them will have a higher IP priority toss than the other 10. The business customers will have a higher priority than the residential customers. After they set up their PPPoE sessions, they will send traffic destined towards the Ixia port 2, which has one IP endpoint. Once that is done and traffic is verified, we will increase the rate of the business users with a higher priority uh, and, and verify that there is no impact or there is impact on the existing business customers and the existing residential customers. This test will show the capability of the IX network per session statistics to show you the aggregated view at a per toss level, the aggregated view at a per business or residential level, or drilling down into the per session statistics for both all 10 business customers and all 10 residential customers on the control plane side of the PPP sessions as well as the data plane side, uh, the per session traffic statistics. In chapter two, we're gonna go over the IX network application and the configuration of the control plane sessions and the data plane traffic. Right now we're on the port manager screen and I've already got port one configured as my PPPoE port. I've just named that port and port two is my IP port. If I click a little further down on the authentication access host folder, you'll see my PPPOX configuration here, which is actually PPPoE. I have the PPPOX um, header added on. Uh, I have a, a batch of 10 residential customers here, 10 sessions in this uh, item, and then a second item of 10 business type customers. And I can further uh, configure my um, parameters for PPPoE, including MTU, VLAN configuration, uh, and then there's additional tabs down below if I want to configure other PPPoE parameters or add LCP and NCP configuration options. So now we can just start our PPPoE sessions. One way to do that is simply by clicking the global start protocol button right here. And we can see that the PPPoE sessions have been negotiated. Now typically right here you might want to go to the statistics and look at the uh, session stats at an aggregated level or at a per session level, but we're going to save that for chapter three and go right into traffic. So to go to traffic, we'll just click on the traffic option. And then we're going to use the advanced traffic wizard to build our traffic uh, for the established PPPoE sessions. 
Okay, in the first screen of the traffic wizard, we're actually going to uh, give our traffic item a useful name. Like, uh, we're going to go from PPPOE to the IP side. We're going to go that direction. And uh, we'll leave this source destination mapping the same. And we're going to actually build two endpoint sets, is what they're called. And we're going to add the first endpoint set from our business customer. As we can see, the IP addresses have been achieved, and we have 10 in this range from that to our IP port on port 2. And we're going to add that. And just to make it a little easier, we're going to name it our business customers. And then we're going to add another endpoint set of our residential customers. And there you'll see its IP addresses. And we're going to, our destination is going to be port 2. We'll add that and name that residential. Okay, now that we've done that, we can move on from this screen, now that we've added our two endpoint sets, to the Packet QoS screen. At the Packet QoS screen, we actually want to configure our QoS like, as we had in the network in the diagram. So for our business level customers, we're going to set our priority level to the highest, which is 111. And for our residential customers, we're going to set it to a lower priority, Let's just choose this priority 001. So now we have each uh, type of customer with a different priority level as per the topology diagram. Move on to flow group setup. In the flow group setup screen, we're actually going to configure this at a per traffic item level setting. So we'll configure both the business and residential for the same um, option. And the, what we're going to choose here is the IPv4 precedence. The reason we're choosing IPv4 precedence is because we want to uh, configure our traffic in such a way that we can easily adjust the frame size and the rate of the traffic for the business customers as one entity and the residential customers as one entity. So it'll be easier uh, for us to show uh, business customers getting a higher bandwidth or a higher rate at some points during the day and lower rates and more easily adjust to our test case. Another note here is an additional option to set the flow groups based upon your session ID. This would allow each and every session ID to have its own frame size and rate and you can adjust on the fly if you want to each and every session ID. The only limitation here is the per, per card type uh, only so many sessions can be configured. So each session would be a stream so depending on your card type each port would only have so many session IDs that it could support if you did check this box. And we'll move on to the frame setup tab. We'll configure a 128 byte frame size. We'll leave the rate setup at 10% line rate, which we can configure now, and we can also change this after the wizard if we want. And onto the flow tracking side. Now on the flow tracking side, we actually want to configure the IPv4 and PPPoE session ID. This gives us the ability to track uh, on the data plane per session side, not just the session itself, but also per IPv4 precedence. So we're tracking on both of these at the same time. And moving on to the preview tab, this is a nice tab to see the packets as they're going to go out on the wire. So we click on the view flow groups slash packets. And we'll look at the representation of two flow groups, one for the business user and one for the residential user. We can see here that the first flow group we, pick, we select on, we'll see the destination and source packet as they go out. We'll see how there's 10 packets here for 10 different sessions. Uh, we have the session ID as is returned by the DUT, as well as the precedence level that we set. So we set this one for the highest priority of IP toss precedence, and then there are even more parameters further to the right. And then we can click on the next flow group and see that it's the other um, residential customer with the IPv. IPv4 precedence of 001 and we can also see the session IDs uh, that, are, that were returned by the DUT there. And finally the validate tab that will tell us if the configuration that we have is valid for the current traffic item that we just created within this run of the wizard. And we can see that our configuration packets, flow groups, and tracking is all good and we can finish the traffic wizard. From the finished traffic wizard, we can see we have our traffic item configured. 
we can see we have the two flow groups, one for business and one for residential. And we can scroll to the right and we can see our priority of high priority on the business and lower priority on the, on the residential. We can further scroll to the right and see our frame size and rate of 10% and 128 bytes. On the upper screen is a, just a graphical representation of our configuration. We can see that if we highlight over the PPPoE, we can see that our destination is port 2. And we can see we have two uh, endpoints within this PPPoE port, one for business and one for residential, both going to port 2. And on the right is also just a summary of our configuration from the wizard. Now we can just apply the traffic and send it to the hardware. So click on the Try Apply Traffic button and the configuration will be sent down to the hardware. And from here we'll move on to results. In chapter 3 we're looking at our results. We're looking at the uh, aggregated and per session statistics for both the control plane and the data plane. So I've clicked on the statistics tab here and probably uh, when I'm running control plane and data plane I typically typically want to see if my control plane is up. So the first place is a good place to start is the protocol summary. So I click on that I do see my PPPoE sessions are succeeded. Uh, there's also another PPP general statistics option down here which gives you uh, the same information but it also gives you more information on your PPP statistics such as your LCP, NCP messages, malform, total bytes transmitted and received. Now from this screen here we'll click off the protocol summary and just look at the PPP general statistics. Here's where I can drill down again. I'm looking at my aggregated stats for all the sessions, but I might want to look at the per session statistics. So the first thing I can do is either look at the per range or per session. If I go per range here, I can see that I have the two ranges, each with 10 up. So if I did have some that were down a beat, I can drill down and see which, which ones are not up and from which range. I can also look at, uh, I can either drill down per per range and from there go to per session or I can go back at the top level of all the sessions and say show me the per session statistics. And then per session I would get the uh, every session stats so I can see my two different ranges down here. I have range 0 and range 1 but I get additional stats like local and remote IP address, uh, negotiation start and end time, uh, the session IDs, the, both the, the AC MAC address and the MAC address of the host, and the AC name. So there's some, some good per session statistics that you get. So it's a, a nice way to look at aggregated stat and uh, detailed stats per PPPoE session. Okay, now that we've seen our control plane statistics, let's move on to data plane and data plane statistics. So we're going to uncheck these options, start our traffic, and then probably the best place to start for data plane stats is at the traffic item statistics level. And this is a new statistic that gives you, uh, in this case, uh, per test uh, traffic statistics. So I can see that uh, for this one traffic item that I have in the test, I can see the total aggregated stats of both TX and RX, if in this case in one direction, but if it was in both directions, I would see the aggregated stats here as well. So we can see we're having a TX and RX frame rate. Now let's say because we, tr we did our flow groups by IPv4 precedence, we can drill down and say, uh, what's my statistics like per precedence value? So in this case, it's per um, business and residential user. So we can see IPv4 precedence 7, which is our uh, business customer, is doing just fine with just uh, no frames lost, wire rate, uh, I should say 10%, and then our, our residential customers are doing the same. And we can also drill down from that same traffic item to um, per session ID. So now we can see the session IDs as returned by the device under test and look at those frames. Uh, and we can look at all 20 
different sessions, 10 for uh, one range and 10 for the other, and see how they're doing individually. And lastly, <clears throat> we can do a combination of the two. So if I was having some loss here, and I said, first I want to see per IPv4 precedence, so I know that one of those one of those IPv4 precedence is my business, one is residential. Then I could look at my business customers, and if I had some loss, I could say, I want to look at the sessions within that uh, business customer. So I want to look at each session within all my business uh, uh, my business customers, and then I could see every session uh, under my business, um, all ten sessions under my business customer and everybody's doing fine. So let's go back to the configuration and per our test topology and our test objective we want to actually increase the traffic of our business level customers which is right here and see if that has any effect on either the business customers or on our uh, residential customers. So I'm going to change that to 90 which happens in real time. Come back to statistics and see if that has any effect on our traffic. So we can see we are seeing a small frame delta, uh, very small. Our um, frame delta of the business users is even. We have about 20 packets lost, but we're sending at a much higher rate per customer. And if we can even go to, uh, again, drill back down per precedence to look at our high level uh, traffic per residential and business customers and we can see there's really minimal loss so there really is no little or no effect to business or residential customers if in fact um, one of them is sending at a higher rate than the other. So this concludes a video uh, that we've seen on PPPoE uh, per session stats both on the control plane side at the aggregate level and the per session level as well as the data plane level aggregated and per session. Thank you. For more information on IX Network, check out www.ixiacom.com. Thank you for your time and interest from the IX Network product management team.